would you look at that? It's another one of those anticipated albums that we spoke about a couple weeks ago in uh, the 2015 second half anticipated releases video. It's Fear Factory, it's Genexus, and there's a lot to speak about whenever it comes to this album. All things considered, their their last disc, The Industrialist, was was not too, too bad, but didn't bring very much of a, a new idea or new concept to the table. Uh, not to mention near the end, the latter portion of that disc uh, was really one that disappointed a good bit. So coming into to Genexus, this is a band that almost has something to prove to the world, and I believe that the only way that you can really do that is by putting forth one of your best efforts and trying to do something that's a little bit different while also maintaining and, and, and really just going at that full tilt 100% effort with that which you are already well accustomed to performing. Fear Factory with this album I feel actually kind of performed and did both very very nicely and this is almost like a tale of two halves of the album considering uh, this 10 track affair the very first five tracks have a very direct feel to them and if there's anything that you should expect from a Fear Factory album it's probably three things first of all industrial 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 uh, heavy metal that has some just pulverizing rhythm to it and a lot of uh, dynamic uh, dynamic uh, drums and things like that you know they're uh, that's the side. The, the low end on this is going to be heavy and aggressive. Secondly, you can expect probably some of the most clean and crisp and at times just downright beautiful cleans that you're ever going to hear, uh, although it's all done within a specific register, within a specific range. So it's not something where you're going to feel a transient amount of dynamacy. It's not as though you're listening to a pop record, but the clean vocals on uh, Fear Factory albums are always fantastic. And thirdly, you can always expect a little bit of the unexpected. The first half of this album really follows the first two portions of that uh, three-step formula down to the letter. Uh, this has a phenomenal low end, very, very aggressive, and the cleans on this that separate the more aggressive, more uh, more of a, of a traditional uh, metal vocal going into the cleans. Uh, there's a great transition element or transition point for that. It's clearly cued, and it's something that the cleans become one of the center focuses of the song. It just adds so much to these tracks. It's why Fear Factory is a group that doesn't need to sway too uh, terribly far away from their uh, from their norm in order to really keep people into their sound because that uh, little bit of sort of Jekyll and Hyde style uh, really gives the band something special. And the first. Uh, the first half of this album really proves that and does so very, very well. There's a track on here, I think it's actually Soul Hacker, that in some way represents or re will remind some folks of what happened at Fear Factory. Kind of musically went into a little bit of hardcore or deathcore. It's kind of weird. It's, it's just a weird little twinge, nothing that's all of that important uh, or not something that you should certainly pass judgment based around. Uh, but just sort of a strange little nuance that sort of showcases Fear Factory's uh, recognition of what's going on in metal today. The second half is whenever things start to really get interesting, and the second half is also where the third of those three four, uh, factors that I told you about start to come into play, expecting the unexpected. The last two tracks on this album are actually very, very interesting in the point that it almost feels a little bit conceptual with Battle for Utopia and then Expiration Date. It's almost like uh, uh, the battle alone is one that can be either uh, one that is an actual physical battle, one that which uh, humanity has to actually, uh, you know, go up against somebody else, or perhaps it's one that's very personal where it's a battle within ourselves as individuals of Utopia. But at any rate, the critical portion of this is with expiration date with the fact that this is a track that almost feels like it almost feels like fear factory taking the cue from uh some of the uh, some of the i don't want to say pop because that's a horrible horrible phrase but uh it, it's one that definitely has a little bit more of a housey drone to it it's one that has a progressive 
style atmosphere generated around it. It's something that feels completely and totally different than everything that Fear Factory had delivered for every uh, for, uh, for the first nine songs on this disc. It's a uh, one that definitely slows the pace down and certainly ends the disc on a very different note, and they take that risk, and they take it. They did the same thing on The Industrialist a couple of years ago. It didn't pan out for them. It panned out on this one because Expiration Date is a song that actually has a, a, a good amount of heart to it, surprisingly enough, including a, a robotic voiceover clip saying that, uh, you know, who really lives anyway? It's a very interesting take, not to mention the song itself is an interesting and far away take from Fear Factory's traditional sound. It's almost as though Fear Factory decided to merge and take a couple of cues from groups such as Devin Townsend. I know we just mentioned them with the Cattle Decapitation review, but it's really how it feels. Whenever you have somebody that has that monolith of aggression that always constantly showcases itself and then sort of goes into this side, it's a very radical 180 degree turn, but it's certainly one that's appreciated because it's really, really well executed. The second half of the album, while still maintaining the directness of the first two facets of the triad of factors that you should expect from Fear Factory, throws in that third piece, that third idea, and it just creates a complete album. It's, and this is an album that feels complete, whereas The Industrialist really did not. The Industrialist felt like there was something missing right there at the end. Based around this, this is an easy-to-listen-to album. Very, very accessible for... Uh, new fans of Fear Factory, as well as the, the cherished and the long-time, long-aged veterans. It's an album that will give you the Fear Factory dosage that you need while also kind of injecting you with something a little bit new, almost like the Fear Factory drug was cut by something just a little bit different this time, and it actually causes a little bit better of a high subsequently. Uh, this is an album that is strong in all of the right places while also experimenting just enough to really showcase that Fear Factory sound can be extremely dynamic and can actually morph fairly well. The only complaint that most people will say is that it's more of the same at some portions of this album, that it just seems like the, uh, the, the formula works and they're becoming a formula band. I actually disagree with that sentiment on this record, where I actually feel that the formula is required in order to set you up for the surprise and to set you up for the overall shock value of something so radically different that you get at the end with expiration date. I would give this album an 89 out of 100. Exceptionally strong, very accessible and easy to listen to, flows magnificently, and overall delivers in every stretch, or by every stretch of the imagination. But I want to know what you guys think. I want to know what you think, Cover Killer Nation. Let me know in the comments below what you think about Genexus by uh, Fear Factory. And I will talk to you guys probably sooner than you think. We have... Still two albums that we need to speak about uh, within the course of this week. One of them is going to be very, very, well, it's going to be nice to listen to because it's, it's Cryson. And the other one is going to, well, it's going to be the top ten worst songs on Now 55. So I think you know what my feelings are regarding that. So you're going to want to subscribe if you're not already. That way you can see both of those videos and any others that we uh, release uh, in the future. And also, please give the video a like. I thank you so much. Go out and enjoy the Sphere Factory album. It's fantastic, and I think you'll dig it. Have a good one.